my creators Dirk here, thanks so much for tuning in. Right now, I split my footage. I use Sony cameras for my photos and I use the Micro Four Thirds cameras for everything video related. I was hoping that I could find inexpensive camera lenses for the Micro Four Thirds system that I could use for both, for photos and for videos. And today I'm testing the Sigma 16mm f1.4. There are different use cases for this lens and this is why I have to divide the video into two sections. One is more photocentric and the other one more video related. Let's get started. This is a really nicely well-built lens. We have 16 elements in 13 groups. We have nine blades. The front filter size is 67 millimeter and it feels premium. It costs $484 and therefore it's not really a budget lens. As you can see, in terms of sharpness, at f1.4 it is not really at its peak performance and as soon as we stop it down to f1.8 it becomes already much sharper and it's at its best at f2.8. For video, the sharpness is perfectly acceptable because in video footage you don't want to have the over-sharpened, over-the-edge looking footage. You want to have more real footage. And there I have to say the f1.4 is perfectly fine. Unfortunately, we have pretty high chromatic aberrations to deal with and this is something we may be able to attack in post, but it's not very easy in video. So also here I found it better to stop it down to f1.8 or even f2.8 for a better image quality. <laughs> I'm showing you footage that I normally would not record at f1.4. I only did it to test the Sigma 16mm f1.4 to see how far I could push it. We have a large focus ring and that's pretty much the only thing that we have on this lens. And this focus ring goes really smooth, it has a very nice gentle resistance and it is so easy to manually focus on your subjects. The bokeh on the Sigma 16mm f1.4 is okay, is nice. The problem here again are the out of focus areas that have a high contrast where you can definitely see strong chromatic aberrations. Distortions are not a problem at the Sigma 16mm f1.4. We also don't have to deal with focus breathing, which is great. About the focus. The motor functions super quiet and in a controlled environment you always hit your target. You always have a sharp image. When we have difficult light situations, a lot of dark and a lot of bright, a mix, then often the Sigma 60mm starts to hunt for the focus. On the GH7 it functions so much better. Definitely easier to use on the newer sensor compared to the older versions. Of course we get a lens hood, but here in this video I filmed against strong sunlight without the lens hood attached so you can see the flaring and the sun stars. First at f1.4, then at f2.8, and also at f8. I also tested this lens for longitudinal aberrations. And now let's talk about photography with the Sigma 16mm f1.4. So I love to zoom into a photo and I love to pixel peep and to enjoy every single detail I can capture. And unfortunately, when I take pictures with the Sigma 16mm at f1.4, there's not much detail. At f1.8, it gets so much better. And now I think the Sigma actually brings out the best of the Micro Four Thirds sensor. And for the most part, websites, social media and so on, this is sufficient. In fact, this is more than sufficient. But if you're in need of large prints, or if you're pixel people like me, it is still not comparable to the image quality we are getting when we're shooting with an APS-C camera or even a Sony full-frame camera. But it's no longer a problem of the Sigma, of the lens itself. I think we reach the limitations of a Micro Four Thirds sensor. The conclusion is that this is a very capable lens, 
for photo as well as for video, I mean especially for video. What are your thoughts on this Sigma 16mm f1.4? Can't wait to read from you. Till the next time, stay safe, stay tuned and take care. Bye for now.